Hey guys, it's still Tuesday and we are still talking about chain matrix multiplication and dynamic programming. Welcome to the second video. Hopefully you're fresh off the boat from the first one so you've got all that fresh in your mind. Um, just in case you don't, I've got the little equation written right here. And what we're about to do is go through a couple of examples of chain matrix multiplication in practice and see how to do it just by hand. We're going to start with the matrices that I defined in the beginning of the last video. So we have A at 6 by 3, B at 3 by 1, C at 1 by 3, and D at 3 by 8. And that is all that we need in order to find what we're looking for, which is the optimal ordering of parentheses to produce the fewest multiplications required to obtain the product of the chain of matrices. So, what we're going to do to start is we're going to make ourselves a cost table. A table of costs consisting of A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D. And then if you care enough, you do something like this. I sometimes do. So, you remember that the cost is defined as c from i to j, and i can be equal to j. So, if you do have a situation where you have c of like a to a, for example, that's a situation where nothing is happening. If i and j are equal to each other, nothing is going on, so the cost is zero. So, we zero out this whole diagonal here. So, the format of this matrix is that each cell, as you probably picked up by now, is going to contain the cost of performing the multiplication indicated by that cell. But how do we read it? So, obviously this is A times B, but what is this? This is not A times C. This is A times B times C. And this is A times B times C times D. So these refer to complete products. So here we have B times C, and then B times C times D and then C times D. If you want to think about why that works like that, we have A, B, C, D, right? We can only do these in certain orders, right? We can't permute any of these. So this table corresponds to every possible multiplication that we can do here, and there are only one, two, three, four, five, six. A, B, C, D, we have A, B, C, D, A, B, C, B, C, D, a, B, C, D. So yeah. We'll start with the twos. And we can do three possible twos. So we have A, B, B, C, and C, D. Right? Let's start with A, B. A is 6 by 3. B is 3 by 1. 6 times 3 is 18, times 1, remember we have MNP, 6 by 3 by 1, 18. 18 multiplications to compute A times B. Now we'll do B times C. Without writing it all down, we have B times C, 3 times 1 times 3 is 9. C times D, 1 times 3 times 8 is 24. multiplications to get C times D. And now we start with our threes. We have three, we have two possible threes. A, B, C, and B, C, D. So A, B, C, B, C, D. These are our only two choices for how to multiply A, B, C together. We know that the cost of AB in our lookup table is 18. We don't have to redo that. And the size of the product matrix is 6 by 1. C is a 1 by 3. So we have 6 by 1 by 3 is 18. So we're adding these two costs together. We take the cost of multiplying in these two, the subproduct, and then the cost of combining them. So this is just like our tree example from before, right? 
where we have matrices and we're multiplying them together and then we have the cost of combining and that's the format of this whole equation, remember? So 18 plus 18, 36, yes. So that's one option. B times C we know is nine. B times C yields a three by three However, A is a 6 by 3. Oh, I'm not liking this. So what are we going to add U to? 6 times 3 is 18 times 3. 6 times 3 is 18 times 3 is 30 plus 3 times 8, 30, 40, 54. 54 plus 9 is... I'll tell you what it is, it's bigger than 36. So we're going to go with this, A, B, C, and we're going to denote it in our table to let us know how we got that number of computations. That way we'd never have to check this again. We're done. And now we have B, C, D. And just like before, there are two possibilities, and we'll just pick the best one. We'll pick the minimum. Mm -hmm. B times C, we know costs 9, and gives a 3 by 3. D is a 3 by 8. 3 times 3 is 9, times 8 is 72, plus 9 is 81. Seems a little high for this table, but we'll see. C times D is 24 and produces a 1 by 8. Yes. B is a 3 by 1. So we have 3 times 1 times 8 is 24. 48. Defeated. We're going with 48, and we got there with B by the product of C and D, okay? So, if you want to think about this in a kind of a, kind of a hippy-dippy poetic way, what we're doing is we're working our way up from the twos, then to the threes, then to the fours, and up to however many matrices there are, up to N. So, we're building our subtrees using this equation. Right? And we're working our way up from the bottom of the tree. So it's as if the tree is actually growing from the bottom up, like an actual tree. We start from the bottom and work our way up to the top, where we are right now. This right here is going to contain our answer, the final solution, the optimal ordering of parentheses for the entire set of matrices. So we have three possibilities now for A, B, C, D. And we only have three to think about, because we already computed these. We don't have to recompute anyway. We take it from there. Here, BCD, the optimal way to do it, we take it from here. The optimal subtree. Every subproblem is optimized. Just like we talked about in the last video. So, we start from here. A times B is 18. And then we already did it, so we have 36. Most of it's just lookup operations. And A by B yields a 6 by 1 times C is a 6 by 3. Very nice. And this is a 3 by 8 over here with D. 6 times 3 is 18 times 8 is, I think, 18 times 8, 144. 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. 180. And over here, B times C times D, we know that's 
48 just by looking at our lookup table. Remember, the algorithm is not computing anything at this point. We already have all these things written down. 48. C times D, what does it give you? A 1 by 8 by B gives you a 3 by 8. And A is a 6 by 3. So this is going to be 144 again, because 6 times 3 times 8, 40, 188, 192. Okay, so clearly this one's not going to win, but this one is still in the running, assuming that this is more expensive than both of them. Let's see. A times B is 18. C times D, 24. So we're going to add those together, plus the cost of combining them in the end, plus this guy. So A by B gives you a 6 by 1. C by D gives you a 1 by 8. So we have 6 times 1 times 8. 6 times 8 is 48, I think. Forty, fifty, sixty, seventy, six. Yeah, that should be it. Ninety. And we get there with our newly discovered optimal ordering. This is half the next one up, so definitely the winner. And our newly discovered optimal order in the parentheses is A, B, C, D. And hopefully you see how we built that up. You're never going to care about these. Don't worry about it. So, I honestly think, now that I'm thinking about it, I think that that should cover any possible problem that could get thrown at you. Um, they might have more complex, like just basically the only thing that they can do to make this more difficult is to make the dimensions bigger or harder to multiply, that's all. But the principle is always going to be the same thing. You're never going to like hit a snag where like, oh no, it doesn't work. Like, it will always work, and it will always work exactly like this. So it's a very beautiful algorithm, and um, hopefully I helped you understand it a little bit better. And if not, or if you want to see some more examples, I have several more, um, but if, you, if you'd like me to go through them, then uh, let me know. If not, I could at least just post the problems and you can go work on them on your own. In fact, why don't we do that? Here, I'll put up the problems. You can go and you can take what you saw here and apply it to those without having to watch me go through it all over again. One second. Other problems. All right. For you to go try. The first problem, let's say we have matrices A, B, C, D. In these problems, they usually come in fours. So, because more than that, it gets very cumbersome. And less than that, it's too easy. 50 by 10, 10 by 30, 30 by 20, and 20 by 100. Go give that a shot. That's all you need. Just make your cost table and compute. If you need to, watch, if you need to follow along with my video, then go ahead and do that. And then another one. Let's see. It's over here. Got notes everywhere. Yeah, that'll do. Okay. Another four matrices for you to try this on. This one will be 12 by 5, 5 by 3, 
3 by 40, 40 by 2. So if you follow along with the video, you should be able to do both of these. And um, what I'll do is in a few seconds, I'm going to write the final solutions to each one, A, B, C, D. Uh, but don't look at that yet. Go try them, pause the video, and then come back and hit play and see if you got it right. So, for the first one, what you should get is A, oh god, A times the product of B and C times D for 70,000 multiplications. The second one, you should get A times B times the product of C and D for 390 multiplications. Okay? If you didn't get those, then just go back and just check your arithmetic. Like the, that's, that's where you can trip up with this, is the arithmetic. I trip up all the time. You watched, you've seen me trip up. I don't even bother trying to hide it at this point. So anyway, that's chain matrix multiplication in a nutshell. Hopefully it helped. Um, I'll see you next time.